Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well this week. I was taking a look back at my Psyker and I wanted to figure out a way to make him more team oriented while having a nice variety of weapons to choose from. This week I set out on making that happen. Ideally most weapons fit a person's playstyle, so I didn't want this build to take away too much when it came to using the right weapon. Since it's going to be more team focused, I wanted to grant more of a focus on using weapons that take care of the horde in times of need, as well as being able to protect my team in case of emergencies. For my primary weapon, I went with the Obscurus Mark II Blaze Sword. It's what feels comfortable to me. I personally love the moveset and the ability to quell my peril in a pinch. However, you can use the Dueling Sword as well here. Both of these weapons' main function is sourcing crowd control and minimizing the amount of overwhelming forces with little to no issue. The other reason I side more with the Blaze Sword is its use of Deflector, a blessing that allows me to move around if gunners are present. With this blessing, you're given a personal shield whenever you block. You just need to be more aware of your peril growth since it will rise quickly if you're being shot at. The other blessing I went with was Repost. Again, since this weapon is going to be used with a horde clearing, I wanted to be able to raise my crits by dodging. Again though, if this is about speed, you might want to go with the Dueling Sword as it can definitely provide you with a huge boost of speed between dodging and it also provides multiple hits on target much quicker. Of course though you'll lose the ability to deflect ranged attacks, but that won't matter when you see what the abilities are in our talent tree later on. Since this build can go in many different routes, I've tested both weapons and I find myself liking the Blaze Sword a little bit more, but if you want to go with the Dueling Sword I'd recommend taking Precognition for extra finesse damage when dodging and Shred for bonus crit chance on chained hits. This should kill off Poxwalkers and infested enemies with ease. As for the perks on the Dueling Sword, I would take Unarmored Enemies and Carapist Enemies since there is an abundant within Damnation. As for the Blaze Sword, I sided with Maniacs and Unyielding Enemies. Again though, I'm more used to using the Blaze Sword for taking out harder hitting enemies such as Crushers or Mutants quickly, but that's really the only downside to using the Dueling Sword that I found. But that won't matter too much when it comes to your secondary. For my secondary, I wanted to test multiple options again. Since I know people are struggling with finding better gear, I wanted to give options. The Void Strike Staff would still be the best in slot in all honesty. It provides more of a variety when it comes to being able to assist your team on the field. Not to mention, it could two tap crushers when rolled with good enough stats. The perks line up with how I like to approach enemies depending on the moment. Carapist enemies and unyielding enemies are where I like to sit when it comes to using the void strike. The amount of enemies that it can push away is why I find it best in slot. It can clear out hordes and give you and your team a lot of space. And it takes down many different types of specials and elites with ease. The two blessings that I like to use are Surge which grants you two shots on critical hits and Warp Flurry which grants you also a faster charge up on your secondary attacks. But like I said before, I tested out multiple options. Another weapon that I like to use from time to time is the Surge Staff. If you can get Warp Flurry with Warp Nexus, you can chain kills with crits much quicker. The only difference here is that you go from being able to clear hordes to only being able to focus single target enemies. Since that's the case, I wanted my perks to go towards doing damage to Maniacs and Unyielding Enemies. I tested out the other two staffs, and while I find them still useful, I find them really low in damage output compared to these two. If you're going to use the Surge staff, I would recommend highly taking the Dueling Sword, as it provides you with much more mobility and an easier way out of situations with the ability to dodge and crit. Whereas with the Blaze Sword, you can take either staff, as you can rely more on its Warp Charge ability and being able to defend yourself against Gunners. As for Curios, you want to have max toughness across the board for all of your top blessings. However, if you find yourself downing a lot because of para levels being too high, then you can throw on a wound just to be safe. Keeping your toughness high will come in handy later on. Since I love having more uses for my combat ability, I like a little bit more regen there. But with resistances, I usually go with at least one for gunners, as well as some for corruption resistance. For your final perks, I'd lean towards having some toughness regen speed, as you'll see that your toughness will be your main focus on your survivability. Toughness will coincide with most of our passives. Speaking of passives, let's take a look at our talent tree for a second. I wanted to give my Psyker multiple ways out, as well as have tons of tools at his disposal if needed during any encounter. With Telekin Shield, we can spawn a shield in front of us for 17 and a half seconds. It blocks all ranged attacks and lets our teammates shoot safely behind it. As for our ability modifiers, I went with Bolstered Shield for an extra shield cover. I also chose Enervating Threshold which has a chance to stun enemies that pass through it, but specialist enemies will always be stunned. This is great for Poxhound missions when your team is readying for the oncoming pack. Walling off a choke point can give your team a safer option. One of my favorite uses for this though is picking up teammates in dire moments. Like when a mutant is rushing towards you, you can stop him dead in his tracks before he's even able to get to you. 
I find this more versatile than the dome just for the ability of being able to stop specialists alone. I went with the sail as my blitz because unarmored enemies can be killed quite quickly. That means gunners, ragers, and snipers can be taken out with ease and without worrying about aiming quickly. And we already have weapons if they're armored with the carapace anyways. The two blitz modifiers that I chose were ethereal shards for the ability to pierce more targets and quick shards to help replenish our shards quicker. When you have a room with tons of targets and you notice that your team is all scattered around, you can hang back and send some shards to back them up. This will allow them to get some much needed breather room and prevent them from being overwhelmed. Since we want our shields to be our main use of deflecting, I went with Seer's Presence as my aura. This just gives us a 10% cooldown reduction for everyone on the team. Our keystone ability will be Warp Siphon. This can be great for when multiple gunners push your team, because upon killing any specialists or elites, you'll gain a warp charge, and you can gain up to 4 of these. Each use of your warp charge reduces your cooldown for your combat ability by 7.5%. This could be huge for protecting your team and shield spamming. I wanted to enhance that for whenever we're not using our shield, so for the modifiers, I went with Empyrean Empowerment for the base damage increase of each charge that we gain, and Inner Tranquility for the negative 6% peril generation reduction for each warp charge that we gain. I think what makes this build work so well are the other two keystone modifiers. Psychic Vampire grants you the chance to earn a warp charge on any kill. Needless to say that these are just free charges. And with Warp Battery, we can store up to two more extra charges, getting us to a total of six. That means with maximum warp charges, we gain a 24% increase to our base damage and up to negative 36% peril generation reduction. But best of all, we can gain up to 45% combat ability cooldown whenever we use our shield, readying our next shield much quicker if needed. For the passives, I wanted this build to focus mostly on survivability with as many options to help our team as much as we could. With Battle Meditation, we gain a 10% chance to quell 10% of our peril on kill. This is best used with the Void Strike staff, as multiple targets can be cleaved upon releasing your buildup of your secondary attack. I chose Empathic Evasion, as it gives us a free dodge against ranged attacks for 1 second whenever we hit a critical hit. And with Kinetic Deflection, we can gain peril instead of using Stamina to block. This will come in handy whenever we're using our Blaze Sword. Mind in Motion allows us to move at a normal rate while quelling, which is a must when you're trying to move with your team. With Puppet Master, it gives our Coherency Aura a 50% radius boost. Quiet 2 was the reason we wanted such a high toughness blessing for our Curios, as every time we quell 10% of our peril, we replenish 5% of our toughness. Solidity increases our quell speed by 30%, making our regen even faster. Soul Stealer is really nice as it also replenishes our toughness whenever we get a warped attack kill. This is incredibly useful as we gain this in multiple ways, and it gives us a little bit more survivability. And lastly, Warp Expenditure, which also replenishes our toughness for every 10% of peril generated. And as long as you're juggling your peril, you should be able to remain at a steady flow of toughness while fighting. A great way of making sure that you can gain fast toughness is using your staff and spamming, or taking out your blaze sword and spamming your special attack, and quelling it immediately. Another way you can earn toughness in a pinch is with a sail. Juggling between killing enemies and quelling your peril is a great way of regening your toughness very quickly. As for my operative modifiers, I went with having an increase to crit hit chance, toughness replenishment, peril generation, range damage, overall toughness, and toughness damage reduction. As a disclaimer, using force weapons makes this build a lot easier to control your peril, as every weapon that you'll have will be able to quell. If you feel comfortable with the dueling sword, it would definitely give you an advantage over crowd control. I just prefer the blade sword because of its ability to keep me safe against gunners. Overall, Psyker has a lot of different abilities that can be utilized to manage your team's composition. In between making this build, I actually made another build that needs a little bit more tweaking before I can call it good, but it will use the dome shield for maximizing team toughness replenishment. However, that can be more useful when running maelstrom missions with lots of different specialists. I really hope that some of you looking out for more team oriented builds enjoy this one, as it grants more aggressive playstyles to strive and allows you to protect your teammates from disablers and ranged threats with ease. Play in the middle of your team and stay with anyone using a strong ranged weapon. A system when it gets chaotic, and trust in your ability to balance your peril. Anyways, I'm gonna go join another match and guide my team to victory. Enjoy the rest of the match showing off how to use this build effectively, and in case you forgot, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Good luck out there. Gratifying. An assassin needs a target.
can't very well just point them at the home. I can only carry you so far. Cogs blame I eliminated. Abandoned, or are they lost? Yet to achieve Stop, target Donna. pacification. Trouble. Zola stronger than she looks. Stone strong. I have known many like you. All came from Time for the main I 
Neutralization. <laughs> 